One shot thought number I don't even know and it doesn't really even matter because hey, who said I even have to upload these all in order, hey? Did anybody say that? Did I say that? No. Um, the problem with starting and stopping, <laughs> I'm supposed to be making these videos short so I have to stop but every time I stop I'm like, no, I need to continue. Come on, I wasn't done yet. You can do this. I'd actually rather right now. I just feel like talking and talking and talking. I can talk for three hours straight about all kinds of stuff. But nobody ever watches videos like that. I mean, hey, I do, depending on the topic. There's plenty of two, three hour videos. Just two, three, four. Was it three hours or was it two hours? Just the other day I was watching a live stream. And okay, so I was doing other stuff at the same time. So most of it went, woo! Because I was playing a game that, like, it's literally an attention game. You have to be paying attention. Even when you are paying attention, it's hard to do it correctly. So it kind of isn't the wisest to do something like that. Well, listening to a video that is, like, deeply theological and whatnot and goes, woo! Even when you're paying attention to it. So that was fun. But that's not what this one is supposed to be about. This one short thought is fiddling with everything a need to. So, you know, um, sometimes, I mean, I think I've mentioned it before, but I might as well just like do a two minute video, which means I have 60, 50, 40, 30, almost seconds to talk about it. Fiddling with everything because it's a need to. When your brain is going a mile a minute and you're trying to focus, or when your emotions are going all over the place and you're going to lose it because you're either too excited or too depressed, both of which are bad. And both can go to the extreme really fast when your ADHD is like, woof, 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 woof. you have to fiddle with things sometimes. Sometimes you just have to fiddle with things. So if I'm sitting there fiddling, that's what you literally, that's what a fidget spinner is. That's what the cube things are. Those little cube things that have all kinds of like buttons and, and, and squeak and whatnot. And sometimes I'm tapping my foot and my sister's like, stop it, I can hear that. And so like I'm sitting at the chair. Our chair is one of those recliner things where you can like lift up the thing and your feet come up. And I'm sitting there for some reason, I'm like fiddling with the handle thing and I'm like going like this and like, I, 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 there's no reason to, but we're watching the TV. But then my sister can hear it and she's like, stop it, I'm a stop foot. All right, I didn't even, I don't even know why I was, I didn't even, anyway, <laughs> so it happens all the time, and I'm fiddling with this thing, and I keep sticking my fingers in there, and taking them out, and like, I'm fiddling with the rings on my fingers, especially these two, because they move so easily, I had several fidget toys in the apartment, and some of them, I found one that was actually really good, it's perfectly exactly what I need, when I'm sitting here with my headphones on, I'm regularly fiddling with this, Especially if I'm watching something emotional. The more emotional something is, it's just like with the rabbit trails. The more emotional something is, or the more, yeah, emotion. It's like, me. it's highly, highly related to emotion and, and how emotional I am. Sometimes fidgeting still with stuff is actually a bad thing. <laughs> Put that away because it starts distracting and all of a sudden I'm fiddling with it. And all of a sudden my brain is focused on the fact that I'm fiddling with something and my brain goes, woo off to stuff and you know what it's a processing thing when I'm fiddling with stuff it helps me process stuff so guess what I was just fiddling with that and all of a sudden my brain was like what am I trying to process right now oh wait I was in the middle of talking about something so sometimes it's not helpful to the out world conversation to be fiddling with something and sometimes it is because I have to stay focused on the outer world so fidgeting something with something is letting my brain silently process whatever's in here or like you know K -k 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 stop close that trap door uh so that's an interesting thing. Fidget, fidget toys. There's all kinds of fidget toys. Some of them are like strings or things that you can be like wrapping around your fingers and wrapping or whatnot. Some of them are literally like a pen. All I need to be able to do is like this. <laughs> I love doing that. Uh, like, <laughs> like that. And some of them are like um, um, the, the feeling because, you know, going back to that sensory one that I had where sometimes you need to take it all off and stop it. And sometimes you actually need to stop, start it. Sometimes like the feel of something really smooth or the feel of something kind of bumpy, you know, like those massage thingies for your feet where you're like, it's going like that. It's like the little bumps all over and it feels really cool. And um, so, yeah, there's all kinds of fidget toys and some of them are awesome and some of them aren't. And more importantly, everybody that needs to fidget has certain toys that will help them more than others will. Or certain objects, I should say, because some of them, like, they're labeled as toys, but not all of them are necessarily toys. And that's, that's the thing. If I don't have something else to fidget on, when I had long hair, it was always my hair. Because it's up here, and that makes my arm too tired for multiple reasons, sidetracking. My hair, I was constantly... And, regularly, I can't now, it's way too short at the moment. But regularly, putting it in my mouth like that. 
constantly, constantly putting in my mouth. And But now, because I can't play with my uh, hair regularly, constantly, I'm going like this with my lips. Not picking at them per se, just like squishing them and moving them and picking at them. Not necessarily picking skin off. It's not like I'm being gross. Some people pick at their eyelashes. I only do that if it feels like there's something in there usually. Or my necklace. That's one of the reasons why I have to be wearing a necklace. Aside from the actual physical feeling of having it there, I'm just so used to it that not having it there. Like literally when my apartment burned down and I didn't have a necklace, I actually started mentally panicking because I didn't have a necklace and I desperately, desperately needed one. This is not the one I bought. The one I bought is over there. And then a, uh, a really good friend gave me a necklace because she heard that. And she's someone that's close enough to the same kind of feeling as me that she understood. And she didn't think I was weird at all for needing that. So she gave it to me and that was epic of her. But yeah, um, regularly it's my necklace because my hair is too short, especially, and it's kind of awkward to be doing this when people are talking to you. Regularly, it's my necklace that I'm feeling with. And if it's not my necklace, it's my phone. Sometimes just like holding my phone, actually that's a grounding thing, just to be holding something that like, um, it's not it's not a, a fidget toy, because fidget toy is one of, that's what the thing they do is grounding, right? That's the actual official word for it is grounding. Um, and, even if I'm not playing with my phone, sometimes just holding an object that brings you some kind of comfort because it's so familiar, like especially if I'm in a setting that's making me upset because it's not familiar, either in a setting or with a person or with a topic that is too emotional or too unfamiliar or even worse, both, something that can ground me with its familiarity. So holding my phone, actually, while I was in Japan and the first time that... It, like I was in Japan and I got used to being uh, safe with with the, the the difference, the wall that it put up because I sort of understood the language, but I, I mean, I kind of understand Japanese. I understand a lot of it, but a lot of it goes straight over my head, especially if I'm not concentrating. And I can't, for some reason, I can't form sentences. I'm really bad at that. I'm really bad at forming the sentences. Um, but, and then all of a sudden when I was in Japan in 2017, and uh, for the first time I was with a group, there was like, I don't know how many people, but it was like, I don't know, around 50 maybe, 30, 50, I don't know, somewhere in there of English speakers. And all of a sudden I was like, ah, there's no wall. All of a sudden I'm completely exposed. And I panicked. I could feel myself like totally panicking because yes, I have social anxiety, bad social anxiety. Certain parts of my life, it was worse than others. But so like I made the excuse that I had to go to the bathroom. Okay, it was partially true. I did have to go to the bathroom, but I went back to the cabin and I went to the bathroom and then I picked up my phone. Not this one, another one that I had, even though it was a phone that I couldn't technically use in Japan because it wasn't connected. I couldn't make phone calls with it and I had no data. Couldn't use the data roaming or anything because that would be way too expensive. But I could still use it for other stuff, like I could still use Wi-Fi and I could still take pictures. So I had it with me. But just the fact, I mean, just the act of holding it. Oh, that helped a lot. So yeah, anyway, I'm fiddling with everything because it's a need. It really is in need sometimes. So if you see someone sitting there fiddling with something, don't try to make them stop. If they're fiddling with something, they probably need to do it, whether they're consciously aware of that fact or not. If it's like a sound that's like really irking you, like you can maybe try to, to say, okay, could you find another way to fidget instead of doing that? Like, because the fidgeting shouldn't be disturbing everybody around them because that's not fair either. But I mean, you know, cause like if my sister tells me to stop because I'm making a sound or I'm clicking on something, I'll stop. I'll find something else to fidget with that won't disturb her because that's not fair either to disturb someone else with your own fidgeting because everybody has their problems. Sensory things, not just me has that problem. Lots of people have sensory problems for all kinds of different reasons. So it's not fair to trigger them. But if you see someone fidgeting with something, they're probably doing it for a reason. Some people just do it unconsciously and it's not like if you tell them to stop and they're like, oh, stop. But even the people that don't realize, like if you're, especially if it's an unconscious fiddle, there is some reason why they're doing that. I guarantee you there's some reason, whether they know what the reason is or not, or whether it's a big, big issue that's going to stop them from having a total breakdown, or if it's just a whatever little, just because, but probably they're fidgeting. Mm, chances are really good. They generally are fidgeting for a reason. So, you know, either figure out what that reason is and deal with it, or just let them fidget because that may be what they are using to deal with it. And if you don't want them breaking down or having an explosion, let them fidget. So that wasn't exactly where I meant for that to go. And guess what? It's almost 10 minutes. Oops. But so apparently that's a big one. Fidgeting. What do you think? Leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Bye.